Good morning, friends. You're back at that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel, and I just got in this morning. Well, I got dressed for you guys, but still in my pajamas, I went out and picked this little bit of strawberries plus a quart jar that is in the refrigerator for fresh eating. I may have to tap into that for today's recipe. I'm making a new recipe. I always love making new recipes and seeing how I like them when it comes to food preservation and canning. And we're making strawberry banana jam. It's gonna be really fun. It's a great use when you don't have like a huge harvest. Cause you only need like two and a half, two and three quarter cups of mashed strawberries and a little bit of banana. So I'm gonna bring this to you guys. I'm mashing my bananas first and we're gonna cook it together. It's gonna go really fast. We're doing a low sugar recipe today. So if that's something that interests you, you know, typical standard jam jelly recipes, there's a lot, a lot of sugar in there. And if you want a tip on how to make low sugar jams and jellies, I'll be sharing that with you today in today's video. And we have other options on our channel too for low sugar alternatives. So come with me, let's get these things mashed up, measured out, and then we'll get to jamming our jam. Okay, so I'm gonna move my jars out of the way. I think this should make about five jelly jars. And I started with about four cups of fresh strawberries, and I'm just using my potato masher to mash them, because I do want some decent consistency still left of the strawberry. Um, I suppose you could put it in a food processor and process them up, but I kind of like chunky style. So you can use it in desserts and ice creams and not just be left with, I don't know, something with a little less texture. And then I have two put my hand out there decent size medium small to medium size bananas so we'll see how far that goes and then i have from my grandson's um, peanut butter banana sandwiches when he was over leftover bananas that we'll use if we need them but you do want fairly ripe of all of it so um, what these strawberries were were ones that were a little too soft for safe keeping um, in the refrigerator. I think that's pretty good. You know, they uh, already had maybe some bruise spots on them um, um, from me just handling them roughly in my t-shirt gathering method. <laughs> they got a little squished. So that's the consistency I'm going with. Kind of just chunky mash. All right, so I need to measure this out. Two and three quarter cups. It's right at two and a half. So let me grab a few more strawberries. We'll get those added to it. And then we'll mash our bananas. So I don't know where you guys are, but we are in Michigan. And the one stinky part about strawberry season in Michigan is it happens at the exact same time that the cottonwoods bloom. And cottonwood blooms, it kind of looks like it, if you're not familiar with it, it looks like it's, like it's this. So I didn't rinse these first. Should have rinsed them. But it's like, almost like goose down. <laughs> and it sticks to anything and everything, especially strawberries. And I'll rinse these a little bit after I get them trimmed. And it's just the, probably the one thing I really dislike about the, if you could find a negative about strawberry season in Michigan, it's if it could only wait till after the cottonwood bloomed. See, can you guys see that? I don't know if it's showing up. It's like little down feathers. Oh, let me get these rinsed. We'll mash those and see if that's a quarter cup. Mm -hmm. Almost too much. But we're gonna go with it. It's 
between, it's like right at a third of a cup. But I'm not gonna be too picky. So we got our strawberries. Now we need, let me check the recipe real quick. This is a Pomona's pectin recipe and Pomona's pectin is the trick to tell you guys about that. You use a very favorable pectin to use for low sugar recipes. So I need one and a quarter cup mashed bananas. All right, so let's go ahead and use these ones up first. And take one at a time and just see how we're doing. Just shy of one and a quarter cup, almost one and an eighth. But that's all I've got, so we're gonna go with it. Oh darn guys, I thought I was recording. So I've put the fruit and the um, lemon juice, you know, in the pot. It's coming up to a boil. I was sharing with you about Pomona's pectin. So Pomona's pectin comes in a box that looks like this. You can find it on Amazon. I don't know that I've ever seen it at a store. Um, so we're just gonna let this boil for like a minute or so. And um, I need to get my sugar and pectin ready. But the pectin comes separately from the calcium water. So you mix up the calcium water, you add that to your fruit. Um, and it's kind of the activator for the pectin. Um, so we need a quarter cup, no, half of a cup, half of a cup of sugar, or you could use honey. Now to this, I need my pectin powder. Where did I put that? Oh, it's in the box. So to this, and Pomona's pectin goes a long, long way. It doesn't take like a ton. Um, I need a tablespoon. So we're going to put three tablespoons of Pomona's pectin into our sugar. That's just what it looks like. It's kind of like a, a little less than white powder. And I'm going to mix that in really well with my sugar. And that's just going to help Help it go in smoothly and evenly without clumping. And jam and jellies go really fast. So if you've never made jam or jelly and you're wanting to do it for the first time, make sure that you have a distraction-free zone. Like you're, you don't have little ones at your feet. Maybe they're down for a nap for the afternoon or, you know, it's after bedtime and you're not expecting um, any distractions. So you can keep a watchful eye on things. All right, I'm just reading real quick. Do, 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 do. All right, yes, so what I'm waiting for, let me bring you guys a little closer so you can see. I'm just waiting for this to come to a rolling boil and we're boiling but we're not to the point that I can't stir away the boil. So once it comes to a rolling boil, I will add my sugar. We're gonna return it to a boil and boil it for like a minute and that's it. It smells lovely. So I'll be honest, I am not a huge fan and I know a lot of people aren't big fans and some people, it's kind of like one of those flavor profiles that you either love or you could live without it. And that's strawberry banana. So strawberry banana is not anything I would ever order or ask for. But that being said, I love strawberry and <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I love banana and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I really think I'm gonna enjoy this and I think it's gonna make a wonderful ice cream topper, smoothie addition, um, even like a strawberry banana vinaigrette on a salad. So your jams and jellies can be used for lots of things other than just jam or jelly. Add it to a splash to a cocktail, um, you know, maybe like a frozen slushy. All right, okay, we are at a rolling boil. I can't stir that away, so let's get our sugar and pectin mixed in. Yep, 
Yeah, I think this is, this chunky texture is definitely working for me. I like it. It still has lots of good individual colors. You can see the banana from the strawberry. I can feel it thickening up. We're back to that full rolling boil again. All right, I'm gonna call that good. It goes that fast, guys. I don't really worry about jelly. I would worry about it, but not worry at all. But jam, I don't take the time to like take out the foam. I just kind of stir it in. I can already feel like it's setting up nice and well. And we're going to a quarter inch of headspace always for jellies, jams, sauces, things like that. It's typically quarter inch. Go a little bit more. All right, isn't that beautiful? Oh, get these jars all filled. It was a fun, definitely a fun recipe. Super easy. Just so happened, like, like I said, I had that small little modest harvest of strawberries and I knew I kept out enough that we would eat fresh eating during the week. And I was looking up, what can I make that small batch with strawberries? And this looked great. Oh, so close. So, so close. But no, can't can that one. So we will just put this in the refrigerator. And lucky for us, we have some biscuits from yesterday's Father's Day breakfast left over so we can have a little treat this evening. I am gonna taste this. It's already set up really nicely. Mm. It's nice, it's really mild. Really, really mild. I'm trying to think what it, I definitely taste the strawberry. Oh yeah, there was a banana. I think it's gonna be fun with leaving it chunky like this. Are you gonna taste the strawberry or the banana in every bite. So I've got my steam canner heating up to pressure. We are getting it there. I need to wipe my rims. We're gonna put our lids on and get these little beauties in the canner. So just a reminder, that was Pomona's pectin that we used. And I buy it on, personally, I buy it through Amazon. And we have a link to our Amazon shop down in the description. So if you are looking for a direct link, it does help us out a little bit when you do use our store to shop on Amazon. So I will be transparent about that. And then we also will be using our four jars candy lids. And we have a link to those as well, lovely family-owned, operated company in the United States. And we're gonna get these in the canner, bring it up to our steam pressure for our elevation for 10 minutes is all. And I just love that color. That is amazing. And then one for tonight. You guys probably can't see this dial, but should you buy one, it's kind of got like a blue, a ye orangish yellow, a yellow, and some green um, dials. And I'm at the green, and for my elevation, that's just basically you're gonna follow the instructions. And for your elevation, depending on your zone, where do you need to keep that steam pressure? So we're at the green, and that's where exactly where I need to be. Can't say I'm not gonna lose that pressure while I transfer these jars. Put that lid back on, seal it tightly, and yep, still in the green, so I'll start my timer for 10 minutes. Okay, now while that is canning, I have my calcium water. This will keep for the rest of the canning season. I mean, 
I doubt I'm going to have anything left for carrying forward. I need to find a place in my fridge to store this. And I'll just store it there. And then I have easily one or two more batches of pectin. And then I just put this in my pantry and I use it the next canning round. So it might be a little bit more cost wise, like when you just look at a box for a box. But remember, you're using a lot less sugar and you're getting more than one canning session out of a box of Pomona's pectin. So relatively speaking, it's a good deal and healthier for you. So I'll be back when I pull those jars out of the canner like I always do for you guys. I will thank you so much for coming with me on this little quick mini canning session. Start to finish, give yourself a dedicated, you know, 10 minutes and you'll be done and canner going. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.